My name is Chloe Hansberger, and I'm a freshman at the University of Arkansas. The piece of art I chose is Self-Portrait with Fish and Cat by Joan Brown. It can be found at Crystal Bridges Museum of American Art. Joan Brown was born in San Francisco in 1938, where she attended the California School of Fine Arts. During her lifetime, she married four men, some of whom were also prominent artists. While Self-Portrait with Fish and Cat is a painting, Joan Brown was also talented at drawing and sculpture. The art, she taught art on and off throughout her life at many institutions. Joan Brown won two very competitive awards, the National Endowment for the Arts Fellowship and the Guggenheim Fellowship in Painting. The grants from these awards allowed her to focus on her art and travel extensively. Joan Brown visited countries in almost every continent. In Self-Portrait with Fish and Cat, Joan Brown depicts herself holding a paintbrush in one hand and a giant fish in the other. Initially, the eye is drawn into the painting because of Joan Brown's use of bold, saturated colors that contrast with each other. The painting is very two-dimensional and Joan Brown does not implement perspective, so her feet in the painting seem to be floating, the tile floor appears to be running up the wall, and the shadows of her body are unrealistic. The curve of the fish drags the eye across the entire painting, from fish to artist and then down to the cat. Joan Brown creates asymmetrical balance within the painting by staging herself on the left side of the painting and both the cat and fish fill the space on the right side. Brown uses lines to create texture in the paint splattered clothing. In the same manner, she creates the texture of fish, scales, tail, and fur on the animal. Since this painting is a self-portrait, it makes sense to analyze it using an autobiographical method. The fish Joan Brown is holding in the painting is absurdly large, almost as big as she is. This gives the impression that the fish is the focus of the painting and therefore part of the self in the self-portrait. Joan Brown might identify with the fish for she had an affinity for swimming. Brown even swam in the first Women's Golden Gate Swim and the Alcatraz Swim. Additionally, the fish is green in contrast with the red background, causing it to stand out. Joan Brown, however, is painted with lots of reds, pinks, and oranges that don't make as much impact. Many abstract artists who were contemporaries of Joan Brown drew from surrealism, so these artists, Joan Brown included, incorporated dreamlike and mythical themes within their artwork. Joan Brown believed she had psychic bonds with her pets, so the inclusion of her pet into her self-portrait makes sense. The elements of self-portrait with fish and cat that contrast most with red background and therefore stand out the most are the paint splatters on the clothing, the fish, and the cat. These elements are all symbolic of Joan Brown's person, be it swimming, relationships, or her status as an artist. Her face is painted with warm colors that complement but don't contrast the background. Obviously, the symbolic representation of Joan Brown is far more important to portray in her self-portrait than her actual physical appearance. Joan Brown, along with Richard Diebenkorn, William Brown, and Manuel Neri, belong to the West Coast Abstraction Movement, or more specifically, the Bay Area Figurative Movement. These artists portrayed landscapes and culture of the San Francisco Bay Area. Many of them also began to include a global perspective to their portrayals of San Francisco life, which Joan Brown was able to do well as she traveled extensively. This movement lasted roughly from 1950 to 1970. The West Coast Abstraction Movement began as a reaction against abstract expressionism and the New York School. Artwork done in the abstract expressionist style is non-representational and non-figurative. Artists used gestural painting to create appealing art that was just art. It did not represent anything else. For example, Jackson Pollock uses drip technique to cover the canvas in splotches of paint in his artwork, White Light. Also, Mark Rothko uses blocks of dark green on top of a vibrant blue to create his popular painting, Number 15. The artists of the West Coast Abstraction Movement, however, got fed up with this style of painting that had no subject. They began to use some of the painting techniques of the New York School in their artwork to represent the area around them. Both movements heavily incorporated form and color into their artwork. I was initially drawn to this painting because of Joan Brown's use of vivid colors. I've never seen a piece of art that had such an overbearing color as the bright red that Joan Brown uses for a background. I do not like most artworks that lack a subject. Because of this, however, I really appreciate artwork that abstractly represents a specific subject just as Brown does. I personally identified closely to this self-portrait despite looking nothing like Joan Brown. For one, I have a black cat who I love very much, so I loved the fact that Joan Brown included her pet black cat in her self-portrait. I also started fishing to bond with my stepdad, so fish are very nostalgic to me. Brown's inclusion of the absurdly large fish struck a chord with me, both in its uniqueness and the way it relates to my life. Ultimately, I find the painting beautiful because it is so unexpected and bizarre.